Hi, my name is Brandon Grizzly. I'm a high school math teacher. We're going to learn about related angles in trigonometry. So this is going to be a fairly long note. And uh, if you have questions, of course, you can ask in the comments. Or if you're one of my students, you know how to get a hold of me. So for any angle that is in quadrant two, three, or four, those are the Roman numerals, two, three, and four, there is a related acute angle, so this is a key term, and it's usually written or denoted as beta, which is a Greek letter, and this is a lowercase beta. Looks like kind of a B with a stick that goes down below here, so that's pronounced beta. And the related acute angle is the acute angle between the terminal arm so that's a term we've seen before and the x-axis so let's see what the, this looks like with an example so I'm going to draw some axes here there's my y-axis and I'll draw my x-axis. So I'm going to draw an angle in standard position, and I'm going to draw a quadrant 2 angle. Remember, quadrant 1 is over here, 2 is here. You want to get used to being able to name these. 3 and 4 down at the bottom, going in a counterclockwise direction. And let's draw an angle uh, 125 degrees. So there's 90, starting here, 0, 90, and 125 would be up this way here. And so 125 is called the principal angle, like the main angle. Now, the related acute angle beta is between the terminal arm, which is this ray right here, this line coming out of the origin, and the x-axis. So if you go straight down to the x-axis, this is the related acute angle in here. It's always going to be acute when we have a, an angle that's sticking out into one of these quadrants. Now, to figure out what this must be, if we had gone all the way from the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis, that would be 180 degrees. We've used up 125 here. So this is the rest of it that supplements up to 180 degrees, 55 degrees. So 180 minus 125 is 55, and that's the related acute angle beta for the principal angle 125 degrees. So that's a quadrant 2 example. Let's do some more. Oh, I've changed colors. I hope that's okay. Uh, so here we have quadrant one, two, three, and four. I guess I'll do uh, pink again for the angle. Let's do uh, 200 degrees. So 180 would be this line over here. We're going to go past that a little bit. So there's 200 degrees. That's the principal angle. Now the related acute angle is the one we form by going from the terminal arm to the x-axis, which in this case is going upwards 
In the last example, we moved down or continued to get to the x-axis. Here we sort of have to back up. It's this angle right in here. That's the related acute angle. And since we are at 200, that's exactly 20 degrees past 180. So that's the related acute angle beta uh, for that quadrant 3 example. Let's try quadrant 4. Back to our original colors. One, two, three, and four. How about 290 degrees? Well, 0, 90, 180, 270. So 290 is just a little bit past here. Let's draw in the principal angle. Label it here. 290 degrees. Now we want to go from this terminal arm to the x-axis, which is going to be moving up this time. We're going to be having this angle in here that completes this circle. So this is the, print, uh, the related acute angle, beta. Uh, and in this case, 290, get, we have to get all the way to 360 to finish this one off, which means this must be 70 degrees, 360 minus 290. So there's a pattern here, and you can memorize the pattern if you want to, but I personally find it easier to just draw a quick sketch to see what the, um, what the angle must be. But I'll write down the pattern for you, and if you like to do it this way, that's fine too. So when you have a quadrant two angle, so for quadrant two angles, like the 125 one, you do this. The beta acute angle it's going to be 180 degrees minus that 125 or whatever that angle is, which in this case is 55. So you subtract the angle that you already have because that tells you how much further you have to go to get to 180 degrees. For quadrant three, though, we're past 180 degrees. So for quadrant three angles, like 200 degrees, you do something like this beta would be the angle that you have minus 180 since we're a little bit past it. In that case we had 20 degrees. And for quadrant 4 angles, like uh, we had 290 degrees, you would take 360 and subtract the angle that you already have. And in this case, that was 70 degrees. So you can use that strategy by memorizing 180 minus your angle, your angle minus 180, 360 minus your angle, or like me, you can just draw yourself a quick little sketch. So here is sort of the key lesson from all of this so far. Every angle in a single quadrant has three other related angles, one per quadrant. So, so far we have learned about the related acute angle, but there are more. So in quadrant one, the angle itself is acute. So if our principal angle was 70 degrees, well, it is its own acute angle and there's no related angle. But in quadrants 2 through 4, the angles have the same related acute angle. Now that might seem a little fuzzy right now, so let's work on some examples to understand how this works. I'm going to draw a big set of axes here.
and on it I'm going to draw four related angles. One of them is already going to be acute, and each of the angles is going to have the same related acute angle. So I'm going to start with this acute angle, 40 degrees right in here. And I'm going to draw another angle which has the same related acute angle. So in here, this is the related acute angle, 40 degrees. It's like the beta for this angle. This angle is 180 minus 40, so 180 back up 40 degrees. This angle here, I'll just label it out this way, is 140 degrees. So we have 40 degrees here, 140 degrees there. And if I continue in this direction here, there's another angle with the same 40 degree related acute angle. It's 40 degrees past 180. That's 220. 180 plus 40 degrees. And there's one more down here, which is 40 degrees before 360. That makes this one 320 degrees. So I'm just going to circle those four angles right now. These four angles with the four terminal arms that we've shown here, those four angles are related to each other. They're the related angles, and they all share the same 40 degree related acute angle. Rather, these three have a related acute angle. and This one already is 40 degrees. So here's a cool thing. Oh, let me switch back to my blue pen if I can find it. When drawn together, the four related angles form an X. They make an X shape, a perfect X shape centered on the origin. So why does all this matter? Why do we need these other angles? Well, the neat thing is that the trig ratios for related angles are really similar to each other. You may have noticed some symmetry in our X shape that we just drew. So let's look at an example of a particular angle and all of its related angles. And we'll calculate the sine, cosine, and tangent just using a calculator for each one. So we'll make a little chart here. Uh, first of all, let's talk about we have a quadrant. We'll have the related angles. And then we'll calculate the sine, the cosine, and the tangent for each one. So as I said, a little chart here. And we'll need four rows in the chart since there are four related angles to angles that are related to each other. So we'll have something in quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So I'm going to start with this principal angle of uh, 50 degrees. And then to find the related angles for quadrant two, that would be 180 minus the 50, that would be 130 degrees. Quadrant 3 is a little bit past 180. 180 plus that same acute 50 degrees, uh, that'll be 230 degrees. Quadrant 4 is a little bit before 360, it's 50 degrees before it, so that would be 310 degrees. Okay, I'm going to grab a calculator, and we're going to calculate the sine of each of these four angles. I'll do them all in a row. Okay, I think that's visible. So sine of 50 degrees first is about 0 0.766. I'm just going to do approximations here. How about the sine of 130 degrees? Oh, it's the very same number, 0 0.766. 230 degrees, okay that's the same number but it's negative this time, so 
And I bet you have a guess about the last one. Negative 0 0.766. Now before we go on to these other ones here, let's talk about why this is the case. I'm just going to pull back that same diagram we were just looking at. And I want you to remember from our talk about the unit circle that as you move around this circle, the sine value is the y value when the terminal arm intersects the unit circle. So the sine is a y value. And all of the y values here, anywhere in this quadrant, these are all positive y values. So the sine will always be positive in this area, and it will always be positive over here. Only when we get past 180 degrees down here, like 220 and 230, that's where we'll get negative values for the y value, which is negative sine value. So all of these ones will be negative. All the ones on top are positive. In our chart, the first two quadrants gave us positive sine values, and the next two quadrants, three and four, gave us negative sine values. We're going to see a similar but slightly different pattern for the cosine, because cosine is related to the x values. So let's check out cosine of 50. About 0 0.643. Remember cosine, those are x values, and we're moving into quadrant 2 on the left-hand side. So cosine of 130, then, is negative 0 0.643. It's to the left of the y-axis. Quadrant 3, cos of 230, same number. And finally, we have the cosine of 310 degrees. Right, same number, but once again, we're back into the positive zone. Okay, so the y values here, maybe I'll just remind you about that. That's the y values when we're talking about the intersection of the terminal arm, the unit circle. x values here, which is why we have this pattern, positive, positive, negative, negative positive, negative, negative, positive as we move around that circle. Now, the tangent can be found by taking y and dividing by x, sine over cos. So I can see right away that this is going to be a positive value. This one will be negative. This one will be positive, And this one will be negative, just by looking at the signs of these two things. But I can also just type tan 50 in my calculator, and I'm not surprised to see a number like positive 1.192. Let's try the tangent of 130. Negative 1.192. Do I need to type the rest of these ones in? Same values, it's just some are positive and some are negative. Okay, so there is our completed chart. So to find the related angles, we use a strategy like this or by drawing a quick picture. And we notice that all of the sine values are the same for every related angle, with the only difference being that they may have a positive or negative value. Same for cosines and same for tangents. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of practice to try right now. I would like you to find all related angles. Uh, for each principal angle. So I'll tell you the principal angle and you find the all the related angles. Okay, so here are the five principal angles. 25, 111, 195, 307, and the curveball here, negative 118. Now your strategy here should be to first figure out the related acute angle and then use it to figure out the other related angles. Okay, pause the video here, give it a try. I'll go through each one individually afterwards, but make sure you try them on your own first. Okay, did you try these on your own? I hope so. 
let's start talking about the first one. A is 25 degrees, which is already acute. So maybe I can just write the related acute angle is the actually the principal angle, so it's not really a related angle at all. It's 25 degrees. So how do we find the other angles? Well, that's in quadrant one, so a quadrant two angle is going to be 180 minus the related acute angle 25, so that's 155 degrees. In quadrant three, we need to go past 180, so it's 180 plus the related acute angle 25 degrees, so that's 205 degrees. And finally, in quadrant four, we need to be 360 minus the related acute angle, 25 degrees, and that's 335. Okay, before we go to the next one, please make sure you've already tried it on your own. For 111 degrees, that's a quadrant two angle. So I do need to figure out the related acute angle, 111 degrees is partway to 180. So if I take the difference, 180 degrees minus 111 degrees, then I'll get the related acute angle, which is 69 degrees. That will be our quadrant one angle. Now, because we know that angle now, we can use it to find the quadrant 3 and 4 angles. Quadrant 3, we will take uh, 180 degrees and add on our related acute angle. So 180 plus 69 degrees, and that'll be 249. And finally, for quadrant 4, that's 360 minus 69 degrees which is 291 degrees. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm hoping you, you've tried everything yourself again. Quadrant three. Our beta is going to be the difference between this number here, 195, and 180 degrees. How far away is it? 195 minus 180 degrees. That would be 15 degrees. So that tells us our quadrant one acute angle. We need a quadrant 2 angle, that'll be 180 minus beta, so that's 165, and we still need a quadrant 4, 360 minus beta, uh, 345 degrees. Okay, the last one, This is a quadrant four angle. The beta we find by saying how far is it from here to the x-axis, which would be at 360. So 360 minus 307 tells us our related acute angle is only 53 degrees. That is our quadrant one angle. Our quadrant two angle we get by taking 180 and backing up by that much. So that'll be 127, and our quadrant 3 angle is 180 plus 53, 233 degrees. All right, now this last one I'm going to draw a quick sketch for. negative 118 degrees. Well, let's see where that is. Zero degrees is here. Because this is negative, we're moving in the opposite direction, clockwise. This would be negative 90. This would be negative 180. So we're kind of back here somewhere. How far is it to here? That's our beta question. That's what we're trying to find out there. So how far is it from 
negative 118 to negative 180. Now the easiest way to sort of type this in your calculator is to find what is the difference. 180 minus 118, and that'll be 62 degrees. And that is your quadrant one angle. The quadrant two angle is 180 minus 62 degrees, which is positive 118. Quadrant three angle, well, it actually is this angle. This angle is in quadrant three, but we usually talk about related angles between zero and 360. So what we do to get there is we take our negative 118, and we're just gonna add on a full rotation, 360, to get us back around to where we were. So this is gonna work. I'm gonna show you another strategy in a second. Uh, that'll be 242 degrees. Alternatively, we can take 180 degrees and add on beta, and that'll give us 242. And last, we have our quadrant four angle. I'll just squeeze it in at the bottom here. 360 degrees minus 62 degrees is 298 degrees. So those are the four related acute ang related angles for the angle 100. Uh, negative 118. So let's continue taking some notes and we'll notice a pattern and a rule here. The six trigonometric functions, and by that I mean sine, cosine, tangent, as well as cosecant, secant, and cotangent, the reciprocal functions, uh, the six trigonometric functions are consistent for related angles. That means that they have the same value for related angles, except for the sine. So for example, the sine of uh, 40 degrees is the same as the sine of 140 or 220 and so on, except that the sine could be different, could be positive or negative. So let's write a little chart here. So if the angle, the principal angle or related angle, theta, is in which quadrant? If it's in quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, or quadrant four, let's talk about what we get for the sine of that angle theta, the cosine of theta, and the tangent of theta. Well, let's just remember once again that the sine of the angle comes from the y value of that intersection point of the terminal arm, cosine comes from the x value, and the tangent comes from dividing those two values y divided by x, or sine divided by cosine, that's the same thing. Well, in quadrant one, that's the top right corner of the, uh, of the graph, the y values are always positive, and so sine is positive in that area. In quadrant two, that's the top left, also above the x-axis, sine is positive. In quadrants three and four are below, and so those give us negative y values and therefore negative sine values. For cosine, quadrant one, that's going to be positive x values. Quadrant two, though, we'll get negative x values. Maybe it'd be helpful if I drew a little picture here. Let's do that right now. So this is quadrant one, two, three, and four. So we've just talked about positive x values negative x values. We're going to continue down here with negative x values. And quadrant four, once again, is back to positive x values. For tangent, we can just look at these two and divide. So positive number divided by a positive number gives us a positive result. Positive divided by negative gives us a negative result. Negative divided by negative gives us a positive result. And then last we have another negative result. And you can see that each function is positive in two quadrants and negative in two quadrants. So this gives us a rule which we're going to call the cast rule. So I'm going to ask a question, we're going to write down the answer, and then you'll see where the rule comes from. 
and we'll be referring to this chart in just a moment. So the question is this, which functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, are positive in each quadrant? So we'll look at each quadrant one at a time and ask that question. So I'm going to draw my little picture again here. So let's look at quadrant one first. Which functions are positive in quadrant one? Well, looking here, sine, cosine, and tangent are all positive in quadrant one. So I'm just going to write down the word all. How about we go to quadrant two? That's over here. Which functions are positive in quadrant two? Hmm, sine is positive, but cosine and tangent are both negative. So only sine is positive in that one. Okay. Quadrant three. Looks like only tangent is because sine and cosine are both negative. So quadrant three. Only tangent. And finally, quadrant four. Only cosine is positive in that quadrant. Okay. Now I'm just going to notice the first letter of each of those words. Draw a little box around them so it's easier to see. And uh, unusually, starting down in quadrant four, this spells us a nice little word, C-A-S-T. It's the word cast. And this is the name of the rule. This is called the cast rule. It's really just another memory aid. It's a, a rule is a strong word for it. It's very much like Sokotoa, where there are, are rules that already exist, and we have a quick way to remember it. Here, these rules exist in math, and we have a quick way to remember that cosine, for example, is the only positive ratio that's down here. So we use this as a way to quickly remember which uh, of these four functions, or sorry, which of these three functions are positive in each area. So let's look at an example using the cast rule right now. So our example is this. Let's use the cast rule to find the related angle between 0 and 360 degrees with the same cosine as 163 degrees. So first we know that the cosine of 163 degrees is now we know that it's negative. Let's look back at our cast rule chart to see why that's the case. 163 degrees is a quadrant 2 angle. It's almost to 180, but not quite. So it's going to be up here in quadrant 2. And only the sine function gives us a positive value there. Therefore, this cosine must be a negative number. So our cast rule says that cosine is negative. Now, when I work on questions like this, I'll often draw myself a little tiny cast rule like this. And I'll grab a different color if I have it. And I'll draw the angle just like that in standard position. And I can see oh, the sine is positive, but cosine and tangent would both be negative. So I'm looking for um, an angle with a negative cosine. So we are also looking for a related angle to this 163 angle, because those are the ones that have the same number for the cosine value. And in this case, we also want the negative version. So using the cast rule, we know cosine is negative for angles in, well, quadrant two we know, because we have one of those. And let's find the other quadrant where we have negative cosines. 
It's positive up there, so that's no good. Quadrant two, we're, that's, we've already figured that one out. Quadrant three, we have the letter T. That means that tangent is the only one that is positive here. Therefore, cosine is also negative down in this area. So quadrant three is the other place that we have a negative cosine. So we know we want angles on this side. We have one up here. We're looking for one down here. So let's write that down. Therefore, we need the related angle, related to 163, in quadrant 3. So let's go about finding that right now. Maybe I'll draw a little bit bigger picture for us to work on. Here's our principal angle, our starting angle. There's 163. This doesn't have to be perfect, just somewhere in quadrant 2 is fine for us. And now I would like to find the related angle that I know is going to be down here. And it's going to be kind of symmetrical, like a reflected version of that one. And the related angles, that comes from, remember that they have the same related acute angle. So each of those is a beta. We don't know what beta is yet, so let's figure that out. We can find beta by taking 180 degrees and subtracting this first part. That'll leave us with the green part. So beta is 180 degrees minus our quadrant 2 principal angle. And looks to me like that's only 17 degrees. Now very important, that's not our final answer. That just tells us how to get to our final answer. So our, our quadrant 3 related angle is going to be 180 degrees, that's the blue line here, plus beta that's 180 degrees plus 17 degrees and that gives us our final answer of 100 97 degrees. So let's have a concluding statement for this one. So 197 degrees is the related angle to 163 degrees with this fact. Cosine 163 is equal to the cosine of 197. Now we can check this out with our calculator right now. If we used any other related angle, like the number 17 for example, we would not get exactly the same answer. Let me try to get this all on the screen at once. So let's find the cosine of 163 first. Okay, it looks like about negative 0.956. Let's now try the cosine of 197. Perfect, same number, same sign as well. They're both negative. So we found the related angle that matches the cosine. It doesn't match the sine, it doesn't match the tan. The signs would be different, positives and negatives would be different. The numbers would all match. But this is the one specific angle that has exactly the same cosine as this original angle, 163. And once again, that key point, this 17 degrees is just one step on our way to a final answer. Because we needed a quadrant 3 angle, we had to find this difference so we could work our way over there. But 17 is not our final answer. 197 is our final answer in this case.